Design Workshop. We are so glad that you are joining this space because this is about how to have less anger. This is about how to finally be that calm, confident person that you so badly want to be. And today I'm truly going to be leaving you with very usable tools to start being more calm because you're going to be getting more cooperation from your kids. And if you are ready to take action, you're ready for new actions, for new results, friend, you're in the right place because this is action day. We had people sharing so many struggles yesterday. I was just reading over some of your comments. Stephanie said, I identify with parenting from the neck up and we're asking the wrong questions. I've spent 24 to 30 hours a week probably wasted on that. And I'm so exhausted. I want to be able to have the time back and be able to climb and dance and do fun things. And Lindsay says, I'm a mom of four. And sometimes just, I feel like I'm bipolar with the way that the emotions are each day and countless other messages. So more that I'm going to read in a moment, you guys, I hear the struggles. I hear the suffering and I'm so glad that you identified what's not serving you. And today we're moving into what will. So let's start for just a second with a few logistical things before we dive in. The first is that I want to announce a winner from yesterday because when you show up, I know it takes so much to be here. When you show up, you qualify to win a coffee gift card and I'll be announcing it the next day. So when you show up and comment either live or in the replay, then I'm able to know that. And the winners that I want to announce from yesterday are Harley Bozert over in YouTube and Brad Benet, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, also in YouTube. Wonderful to see your guys' interactions and always wonderful to have dads involved. Um, Heather Bishop um, Hurt from the Facebook group here, you're our winner. And also Lauren Olson, longtime group member since like 2020. So I want to thank all four of you and I'll be announcing about two or more winners tomorrow. So make sure that you're interacting live with us today. And let's start right now. Give me an emoji of uh, how you are feeling about this topic today, about getting the secret to less anger. An emoji or a word, how you're feeling about the secret to less anger. And seeing folks showing up. Harley says, woohoo. Thank you. So great to have you. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Jennifer, Stephanie, Sarah. Awesome. And Leah should be able to get you the workbook there, Sarah. Oh, awesome. Hi, JC. Hi, Jennifer. Names are going so fast. I can't even catch up to all of them. So glad to see you and so happy to see your emojis of how you're feeling. I want to remind you, if you are watching in YouTube, please put your first initial and your last name as a comment so we can make sure to know who was here to be able to enter you for that coffee card tomorrow. And I want to remind you that you really are going to get back what you put into this workshop. So if you just watch it, that's okay. If you're looking for more support in your life, I want to suggest that you offer some support. As others in the group are commenting on things throughout tonight, feel free to just hit a like button or maybe give a comment if it's something you can relate to. That helps all of us to feel like we're not alone. And I know you'll get it back as well. Last thing I want to cover is the replays. If you would like to share the replays from yesterday or today with a friend, family member, coworker, they're all available at sustainableparenting.com slash workshop, and they will be for a limited time until Tuesday. So feel free to go there to share it with others. All right, friends. Well, let's dive in. So your workbook tells you the secret to less anger is not about, and it's a P. If anyone has any guesses, let's hear them now. What do you think it would be? The secret to less anger is not about a certain P, P word. 
<laughs> Harley guessed it. Catherine guessed it. Morgan JC guessed it. It's patience. It is not about patience. And maybe you've been hearing me talk about this already. Those That tells me you're really paying attention yesterday. I see so many people thinking that the opposite of anger is patience. Like, okay, if I want to stop blowing up at my kid, I think I just need to be patient. I need to be calmer with my voice. I need to slow down. I just need to ask them more nicely. Ugh. And you guys, it makes me like honestly get kind of furious inside because I care way too much about you to let you go down that road. I see it time and time again that when clients let go of that old thinking and step into effective tools, they start to experience quickly more ease and joy and cooperation. And it's the thing that I'm going to give you today that is not patience. It's not just tools to take a breath and be more quiet or calm. It is how to be more effective. When you get those tools today, you are going to start experiencing quickly more ease and more joy. I had a parent cl parent coaching client just this week text me, maybe some of you saw it in my story that I shared and said, oh my gosh, my first coaching call alone is already worth committing to being in this group course because it has been such a huge perspective shift and we're and, and bringing us new results. It's incredible how quickly things can be shifted. So if it's not about patience, let's think about this. What possibly has been happening for you, and let me think about what's possibly been happening for you is that you have been in old cycles that put you in a powerless stance. So even if you haven't been focused on patience, I think you might be not realizing that you're regularly putting yourself in a powerless stance. Hear me out here. Does it ever feel like your days kind of go like this? Oh, I really hope tomorrow's going to be different. Let's just, you know, hope that it's going to be better. Oh, are you kidding me? It's already not going better. And like five minutes after you've woken up, I told him yesterday not to do that. And I told him why it was important and it's happening all over again. Are you kidding me? Okay. Okay. What can I do to coax them, threaten them, make them care enough? Oh, he's still doing it. Oh, my blood is boiling. Frontal lobe is getting frazzled. Oh, that's it. You're losing your birthday party. You're not going to hang out with your friends all weekend long. Does this sound familiar? And the error here, my friends, is that you're not having the tools to be powerful, powerful in that moment. It's a powerless stance to just hope for the best and only plan for the best by like explaining what you want and saying that it's important and then hoping it will happen. I think that's what's going on for countless examples you guys shared yesterday. Heather said, I have twins and sometimes they're just back talking the oldest one, the twins. I just feel like there's yelling all the time and the things I say go in one ear out the other. Liz, our family just feels like there's so much freaking yelling. Kelly, oh, the dentist yesterday, my kid was hiding under a chair, yelling at the doctor and me. Jordan says, oh yeah, my kid took off his sandal and threw it at the dentist. Sarah said, oh, there's back talking defiance. Jennifer said, my son does, or Stephanie shared, there's such struggles. Like they'll, at, he'll, she'll ask for water and then doesn't even want the water and is mad at me. And Jennifer says, oh, my kid does that too. And then throws a fit when I give him what I, he asks for. I think this is about being in a powerless instead of powerful stance. So I want to give you the tools, you guys, you deserve them. It can be better. Your five-year-olds, your twins, your little ones, your older ones, 
they can be different and they are begging you inside. I promise you, it doesn't seem like it. They are dying for you to be handling things in a more powerful way. Not only them, their future spouses are dying for you to handle this in a more powerful way. Their future bosses are dying for you to handle this in a more powerful way. Their future kids are dying for you to handle this in a more powerful way. If you feel this, say yes. Ready to be powerful instead of powerless. Ready to have tools that will get them to listen instead of just hoping and explaining from the neck up. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Stephanie. Yes, Lindsay. Catherine. Yes. You're with me. You're ready. Harley's ready. Okay. So here's what it takes, guys. On your handout, it says what's likely been keeping you from your calm confidence is that you have to truly, deeply, really know that it takes two parts working as one. Write this down in your handout. Two parts working as one. Which means we need to be doing the right thing at the right time. Doing the right thing at the right time. What the heck are you talking about, Flora? When you have the right tool and you're doing the right thing at the right time, it saves you energy. When you are trying to correct a behavior in the midst of a, a blowout tantrum and then you just grab a consequence, that's not the right thing at the right time. When you are trying to validate feelings and really you're like negotiating with a terrorist, like they're saying all these yelly things and you think that you need to be talking with them, that's validating feelings and talking it through at the wrong time. There is a right time for the tools that you have learned in your life. And maybe the tools haven't even been there. And that's something that I can help you with too. I love to help people have the effective tools and know how to use them in the right time so that it's a win. Let's put this into real, real tangible results. I mean, Emily, when she put this into action, she said, I finally feel like teacher instead of dictator. I, and Christy said, instead of feeling like I'm a victim to my child's behavior, I finally see myself as her coach. And others have said, this made the powerful shift of finally feeling like their best, calm, confident self, knowing how to do the right thing at the right time. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You're like, ah, oh, Flora, okay, I don't have time for this. I was hoping this was just like some quick little phrase or like a magic wand. I, I am working. I am maybe a stay-at-home mom. I've got a lot on my plate, maybe relationship challenges. I, I cannot, I don't have the time for what you're talking about. And I have to tell you this, friend, because I care so deeply about you. The truth is the time is going to happen one way or another. You're here because you're already seeing the time be spent in the struggles. And today's the day that you've got to make a choice. Am I going to keep spending my time in the struggles? Or am I going to start spending it on the prevention? Either way, the time is going to happen. You spend it putting out fires or you spend it on prevention. Where do you want to be spending your time? Yeah. 
those that are ready to spend it on prevention because they don't want to be wasting their time having so much yelling, having all of these sibling arguments, seeing behaviors in public that are so frustrating. I'm going to give you three key principles that are about prevention and spending your time in the right way. And when you spend your time in the right way, the prevention, you're not going to be losing your anger. You're not going to be losing your temper. Friend, the secret to less anger is being powerful, knowing how to be the compassionate leader of your family. And in that leadership, seeing cooperation, seeing the child become the respectful, responsible, wonderful one that you want to be raising, that's what keeps you from losing your patience. Knowing that the, the work you're doing is moving you forward actually into progress and not just cycles of suffering, that's what's going to help your anger. So let's do it. Here are the three keys. Yes. I see you there, Claire. Prevention, please. Yes. Here it is. The first thing the keys to sustainable parenting. And I want to say when I did these shifts, it made all the difference in the world with Caleb. In the story that I told you yesterday, these are the things that I did that made it different. And I'll tell you how it played out. The first is you're going to do the right tool in the right time in a powerful way by making agreements in advance. Write that in your handout. The first part is you're going to make an agreement in advance. Think about it. How many of you have been frustrated about kids not turning off the technology when you ask them to hand you their hand your phone back or turn off the TV? But in reality, if you think about it, if I were to ask you, well, what's your rule about TV or phone time, how much they can have it, when they're supposed to turn it off, most times I hear back, we haven't had an agreement. And so think about that. That'd be like if your boss just has you show up for work and whenever they want to, they just say, you know, act today you're going to work four hours and then you show up at work and the next day they're like, you're going to work 17 hours. Or they just, whenever they want to decide if they want to pay you this much for a day's work or that much for a day's work, you probably be fighting against that. And this is what happens for our kids too. And they fight back when we are not clear, we haven't made an agreement in, in advance about what the expectation is, about what the bedtime rules are, about what's going to happen if you are, you know, not getting dressed in the morning. And so the tool that is super, super simple and so impactful that I want to start you off with is just the first tool. There are so many more to get you the full tool belt of sustainable parenting, but this one's a rock solid start is to start using when thens. You're going to make that agreement in advance with yourself, with your partner, and then with your kids. And you're going to use a when then to do it. So here's what it looks like. Let's apply it to some key common things. Honey, when you hit, you sit. When you shout, I'm out. I'm going to walk away if you're shouting at me. Or if we get into the common error, uh, common challenges like technology, we're going to watch one show in the morning. And when you turn it off nicely, you get access to one show again tomorrow. When you have an issue, we'll go a day tomorrow without any. You choose when then. Hey, we're going to have a new plan for bedtime. When you stay in your bed after we've done our last kisses and hugs, I'm going to come back and check on you in 30 seconds. And when you're in your bed, I'm going to rub your back one more time and I'm going to come back again in three minutes. When you stay in your bed, I'll come back again in five minutes. And you do that in increments of like 30 seconds, three, five, 10, 95 percent of the parents I work with have the kids asleep by the end of it. And they've made a positive association with attention being given to the right behavior. Third example, trying to get them dressed in the morning. 
just working with a family last week that was having battle after battle with their three kids that are all school age, well, two school age and one preschool. And they said they did this and the kids came down quick and snappy, no arguments, all dressed. And it was simple. It was when you're dressed, then you're welcome to have berries with your breakfast. Pretty simple, sustainable strategy. They would always have a little bag of berries in the freezer. I've known other families, well, my family, we used to do when you're dressed and you've um, and you brush your teeth, you come down, you can watch a show, a little iPad at the counter with your breakfast. When then? You make the agreement in advance because this is how you don't lose your anger. Then in the moment when they are fussing about it, you're not grasping at straws when you're in like a flipped lid moment like we talked about yesterday where your own amygdala is firing. No, you're going to do the right thing in the right time. You're going to think ahead of time when you're in your best mode of thinking about what would be a good when then. So in the moment, if they are starting to fuss, you're prepared. Yes. That powerful leader of your family that you were always intended to be, that you always knew was there, is able to live. Because you're able to follow through. And if anything, you repeat that when then one more time. And if need be, you follow through. And if you follow through, people always ask this, but what if my kid freaks out then at me? Like I've done this before and then they like freak out. Here's what you're not going to do. The very last line, you don't negotiate with a terrorist. You don't react to their reaction. You don't argue with their arguments. You don't get into rationalizing with a child in an irrational state. You're going to just let the consequence be what it is. And if need be, you walk away or you ask them to walk away to calm down. And you say, I can tell you really didn't like that. And I bet you'll make a different choice next time. It's such a powerful combination. So write this down in your handout or here in the comments so that it solidifies it for you. You are going to make an agreement in advance with yourself, with your partner, and then say it to the kids in advance. Here's our new plan for bedtime, new plan for getting out, getting dressed in the morning, new plan for technology. Let's be clear. And then in the moment, you're going to follow through with a very clear when, then. You're not going to get overly wordy and all that neck up, bop, 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 bop. And finally, if they are upset, you are not going to negotiate with a terrorist to give attention to it. You are not going to get into a rational conversation with an irrational, irrational moment. All right. I see Megan here. I know she has tried this and had it be super effective. Meredith says, I like that when you're dressed and ready, you can have the tablet with the breakfast. Awesome. So I want you to go put it into action, Meredith. I want you to go do this today, right as you're watching this, go think to yourself, talk to your partner, create, where's there been some conflict? If there's something that, you know, if you can predict it, you can plan for it. If it's something that's been happening routinely, it's likely to happen again. Make a plan for that and then put it into action and you have homework. I want you to come back. I'm going to have a specific homework thread, homework thread on our Facebook page. Those of you watching in YouTube, please message me or email me at flora at sustainableparenting.com. I want to hear what you experience in your own sense of feeling more calm and confident and cooperation. And if you're like, oh, I've tried this before and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or I just like, I'm not sure how to do this. I'm afraid, you know, maybe I've tried and I've fallen off the wagon. Then you do not want to miss tomorrow because that's exactly what tomorrow is about, is about this, the best question to ask to end those daily battles. 
If you plan to join us again, say see you tomorrow. And I am so grateful to have this time with you. And I'm so excited for your families to be experiencing you in a new way and you experiencing them in a new way when you use these tools from tonight. Talk soon.